Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to the Pet Lover Summit. I am here today to introduce the beautiful and amazing Karen Anderson. She's our guest speaker today. And the title of this interview is What Your Pets Need From You From the Animal's Perspective. Karen Anderson is an award-winning animal communicator who specializes in the afterlife and pet loss. For over 25 years, she has helped thousands of clients who are struggling with the loss of a beloved companion to find peace and healing. Karen documented her incredible journey from deputy sheriff to psychic with her two best-selling books, The Amazing Afterlife of Animals and Hear All Creatures. Karen offers animal communication courses and coaching programs for all, level, all levels and devotes her life to helping the animals as the CEO and founder of a nonprofit animal sanctuary in Eastern Washington. Welcome, Karen. Thank you for being here. No, oh, thank you. I'm excited to be here. I, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Woo. Well, I, me too. Uh, I am wondering, so I love this topic, what your pets need from you. And this is coming from your experience of working with the, the animals that have crossed over. Is that right? And those that are, you know, still in their little furry bodies, but yeah. Still from, here? Right. The ones that are still here, you know, we, uh, we love them more than life itself and we want to, want to do everything we can for them. So why not hear from the animals themselves? Right. Oh, that's amazing. Well, um, so what would you like to share with us? What do our pets need from us? Well, I think first and foremost, as a pet parent myself, we have to remember that we know our animals better than anyone on the planet and uh, better than our yeah. own veterinarian, you know, who sees them for what, a matter of minutes um, every once in a while. So we have to trust when we get a sense or a feeling that there's something isn't quite right with them or if they mm. start acting or behaving strangely. And really we have to be that advocate and look out for them because they entrust us with their care. So yes. I think just remembering that, you know, if you get a sense that something's wrong or if somebody's acting odd or not sleeping in the same place or, you know, you have to understand that they're trying to let you know, hey, mom or hey, dad, you know, we've got a problem here and, and I don't feel good or I don't, uh, something's not quite right. So mm -hmm. I think that's a really good place to start when we Notice those little red flags. We need to act on them and stay proactive. I hear from so many pet parents that after it's too late, they'll tell me, you know, I knew for a while that something wasn't quite right, but I just thought that it would work itself out. Or I thought that, you know, it was just a fluke thing. And, you know, truly staying proactive is the best way to go. It reminds me of that phrase, I know it is more valuable than I knew it. Because by the time we say, I knew it, it's too late. But when we say, I know it and act on it from a place of our own intuition and power, we can do something about it. Absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's really something that I've learned from doing so many things wrong <laughs> over the years with my own animals. Me it's too. Yep. <laughs> It's a learning curve, right? And they think yeah. that just because many people think because, yeah, oh, you're an animal communicator, then you must know everything there is to know. No, mm -hmm. no. You know, they're, <laughs> they're masters at covering things up. They're masters at, you know, pretending there's nothing going on here. And, and the reason is, you know, actually very interesting I think because in the animal kingdom it's a sign of weakness right if there's something yes. wrong if they're ill or injured I mean so it's very interesting that even from us that they will keep those symptoms and signs hidden and covered up until sometimes it's too late in many cases it can be too late so you really have to be on top of True. things and pay close attention trust your gut if you sense something is wrong chances are something is wrong Trust your intuition first and foremost. Yes, absolutely. 
And, and uh, you know, we have to realize too that our, our vets only see us for a very short time. They're looking at a test result. You know, they're not looking at the day in and day out of the animal's behavior. So even when you go to the vet and you describe what the animal is doing, you're probably leaving out little bits and pieces of pertinent information, just, you know, as human nature, we don't give them the whole complete story all the time. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, really just stay proactive and, and be your animal's advocate for, uh, for everything, you know, get those yearly tests done, get those blood tests done, you know, check on them, especially the seniors, because they can so quickly go into crisis. And you know, I just yes. lost, I just lost one of my own senior kitties. He was almost 19. Oh, and, wow. I know, I know. So hard when we lose these guys, you know, he was mm-hmm. with me so long. I had him since practically day one. Yes. Just devastating. Yes. And it was a roller coaster ride. You know, there's ups and there's downs and ups and downs. And some days he was all over the map and other days he was fine and his normal self, but you just really have to kind of roll with those punches and stick with it. And when you are dealing with stuff with your animals, do you find um, it cha- more challenging than with other people's animals or are you right there? It depends. I've had a little of both of that happen. Yeah. You know, I have okay. quite a, I have quite a few, so I have to really stay diligent in watching for those signs and indicators. Sometimes I, you know, I wake up in the morning and it's kind of like, oh, what am I going to find this morning? Is it going to be somebody threw up? Is it going to be some other kind of yes. mess? You know, mm-hmm. I never know what I'm going to find, and then I have to try to figure out well who did it. You know? Yes. Then, oh, true. You know, they're pointing the finger. Right. He did it. Me. Uh, so sometimes it's <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's it's really easy to tell. Sometimes it's not. But um, uh huh. Okay. All right. That's good we to do, know. We do our best, right? Yes, we do. And as you said, people think as animal communicators, it's easy, but it's not. No. <laughs> no. Sometimes we have our blinders on too. We don't. We don't always mm-hmm. see things, but um, True. truly the, the one thing that I do want to share, and this is a little golden nugget of information for, yes. for your viewers. Um, when it comes to anything in regards to uh, your pet, as far as uh, maybe a health issue or a behavioral issue that you're having as well, um, mm-hmm. I've found, and maybe this will resonate with you too, that if you, the pet parent, aren't in alignment with the outcome that you want, you can send very confusing messages to your pet and actually make the situation at hand even worse because because of the mixed messages, right? So Mm -hmm. let's just take, for instance, let's say you have a fearful dog. Yep. Anyone comes over, the dog runs and hides and is fearful and, you know, the I think the first thing I would do is try to console the dog. It's okay, you know, they're not gonna hurt you. And you reach down, you hug them, you pet them, you hold them, you know, it's okay, you know, no one's gonna hurt you. Well, in the animal kingdom, when you show that kind of affection at the wrong time, you're actually perpetuating the problem. So you're giving giving this mixed signal that it's okay to be fearful because mom is coddling you and petting you when you're in a state of fearfulness so right mm-hmm. that's, that's what you yes. would do to, you do that for a human child but you mm-hmm. certainly wouldn't do that for um, for a dog they have yes completely thank different you stuff. for sharing that that is like that's one of the biggest things I get to <laughs> right <laughs> like when you are just to reiterate what you're saying when you give them love and affection and or treats as human beings, we think we're consoling, we're, we're letting them know it's okay, they're safe. But in the animal kingdom, like you say, it reinforces. So like a dog, for example, the pack leader, if they were doing something inappropriate, the pack leader would nip at them. If they're doing something great, everybody's calm, everybody's wonderful. So yes, when we're like, it's okay, it's okay, we're telling the, the fearful dog, that's wonderful that you're fearful. Please do that again. And the dog's exactly. like, okay. Yeah. And- 
No wonder the animals <laughs> get crazy. We make our animals crazy, right? We because do. we send all these mixed messages. <laughs> yes, so we do. On the on the flip side of that, uh, what I recommend is that you, the human, stay in alignment. So everything should be focused on your goals. So if you have a fearful dog, your thoughts, so up here, your thoughts should be of the kind of behavior you want the dog to have. Confident, yes. comfortable, and relaxed. So that should be your thought. Then you have to imagine with your eyes what that looks like. What does it look like when your dog is calm, confident, and relaxed? Then keep going down. You have to say that out loud. I want you to be calm, confident, and relaxed. See, everything is alignment. And then last but not least, we're right here in the heart center. You have to feel it. What does it feel like when your dog is calm, confident, and relaxed? When all of those things are in alignment, you send your pets a very clear message and you don't confuse the heck out of them. Yes, yes, I love that. As opposed so, to thinking, oh gosh, Fido is going to be very fearful because somebody's coming over and the dog's like, fearful, check. Thank you. I'm, I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> and off they go. <laughs> and this, yes. is this is across the board. This is with horses. This mm -hmm. is with cats. If you're having a maybe a cat behavior, maybe a litter yes. box issue, maybe even a cat aggression issue where they're mm -hmm. picking on another cat in the house. The first thing we do as humans is we obsess about the problem. Oh my God, the cats are going to fight. Oh my God, I'm going to come home and find this yes. puff of fur everywhere. You know, oh, this one's going to pick on that one. We are throwing fuel on the fire. Yes. So yes. how confusing for the animals in our household, because then what happens? We get upset when they do the behavior that we've just reinforced them to do. Right. They're manifesting exactly what we're, we're thinking about. They are because it's us all the loop. We're running mm -hmm. that loop through. We're not in alignment. So yes. I try to bring myself back to that with my own animals. And I try to make sure that I'm sending very, very clear messages, especially for horse people out there, because horses are so ultra sensitive. They can pick up on yes. just the slightest thing. So if you're thinking, oh my gosh, you know, every time I'm in the arena, my horse stops at the gate. Well, guess what? Your horse is going to stop at the gate every time you're in the arena. <laughs> so you have to retrain yourself. This is a human retraining process, yes. not, mm -hmm. not an animal training process. It's definitely training the humans. So mm -hmm. I think those are some really important golden nuggets, really, really valuable. And, and mm -hmm. you know, these are just things that I try to remind myself going forward because yeah. it's, easy, it's easy to catch yourself, you know, doing what you're not supposed to do. Yes. Yes, it's true. And I love that you break it down in um, thoughts, vision, spoken word, and heart. I love all of that. That's amazing. I've never heard it broken down like that. I love that visualization. That's it, beautiful. Really powerful. And, you know, even in your own goals. I'm going to switch topics here for a minute. So, you know, let's just say you're kind of waffling around and you don't, you're not happy with your, your career. You're not happy with a relationship, whatever it is yes. you, the human are doing, you're probably out of alignment somewhere. You may right. be thinking one thing, but you're visualizing something else. You're telling yourself or others something even out of line there. And then your heart really truly isn't feeling what it feels like to be in the space of whatever your goal is. So my thought is state your goals out loud. If you say it out loud, you are more likely to get everything else in alignment because then you're not saying, you know, I hate my job or I, I need to get out of this relationship you're saying what you need, you're putting your goal out there so then you can get everything else in alignment. So it really does help the human animal too, not just the animal animals, but the human animal. That's true. And it's such a, a powerful reminder to us that we're the only humans that have, the only humans, <laughs> the all, we're the only ones on the planet that can verbalize. 
we can state things. And there's a lot of mechanisms in our body that come together so that we can create and form words. And those words can form our realities, as you said, but we need to be conscious of our thoughts and our actions and our words so that we only speak what we want to come about. Just as you said, not like, I hate my job. So, okay, there you go. You're going to hate your right. job and that's your life rather than. Right, right. But yeah. what, what is, what do you want to do? What is your passion? State your passion, you know, state mm -hmm. what your goal is. Don't state the problem. When you state the problem, you just start throwing more fuel on the problem. Exactly. You know, that's truly. beautiful. So, I love that. I love that. It's all interconnected. It is. It really is. And the other thing too, I mean, is uh, for anyone who's having an issue with their pet, uh, one of the things I found when I was conducting sessions is that one person in the household wasn't on the same page. Mm -hmm. And if there's one person, if there's a weak link there, you're going to have a bigger struggle getting to your goal because mm -hmm. of that weak link. So. I would hope that everyone would want to be on the same page. Everyone would want to have the same goal and everyone would practice what they preach. And then you can get to your goal a lot faster. You can help the animal get to the goal a lot faster too. But I found this to be so common that there was at least one person in the family that was like, eh, you know, maybe, they, <laughs> maybe they weren't on board with the animal communication. They think it's all a bunch of hooey or whatever. And sure. That one weak link there can just tear down all of the hard work that everyone else is doing. So mm -hmm. it's really important that everybody at least keep the same goals, state the same goals, visualize it, feel it, say it, you know, make it your reality. You know, I'm a big fan of The Secret. I watch it like 800 billion bazillion times. Love it. And I, I see something new and different every time I watch it but you have to really be in that moment of what it is you're manifesting. You have to feel mm -hmm. it. You have to place yourself, whether it be in abundance or in that perfect job or in that perfect relationship or having a, a pet issue resolved, whatever it is, you have to put yourself in there and really feel what that feels like because your brain doesn't know the difference. It mm -hmm. doesn't have any idea that that's just a thought and it's real to your brain and that's how the universe starts to respond to your energy because everything is based on the laws of attraction even with our yes. pets so mm -hmm. i really try to follow the the laws of attraction and stating what i want and staying in alignment that's what helps me and that's just a that's from a long line of making a lot of mistakes I can share. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as we all do, right? But you're here to share it now and we appreciate that. I did a lot of things wrong. I mean, I'll be the first one to admit it, but, and oh, that brings me to another thing too. And you've yes. probably heard this, you know, so often in your work as well with your consultations is you know, after we lose a pet, after we've had to say goodbye to a pet, you know, we get hit with, you know, tons of remorse and guilt and, you know, did I yes. do the right thing? And just, I shouldn't have done this or I should have done that. And this could have, should have, would have. Mm -hmm. And I think what's so important for the viewers to hear and to really understand and to take into their heart center is that it is a rare occurrence for any animal who's passed on to even go there, to even mention anything along the lines of blame or guilt or who did this or who did that. They don't sure. even, it's like not, it's like a non-issue to them. Mm -hmm. It is so not important to them that it doesn't even pop up on their radar. Right. So if you're feeling like you, should have done a surgery when you didn't, or you uh, shouldn't have opted for a treatment when you did, and you're blaming yourself, thinking that you somehow caused your pet's demise, that will never come up with your pets ever. Mm. They, just, they just don't see it that way. It's not mm. something that they, that's your thought. So 
yeah, their, right. their perspective is their perspective. And it's usually a lot different than our own. And mm-hmm. they don't place blame on us. I can't even think of, you know, maybe a handful of sessions where the animals even wanted to talk about that sort of thing. They go right to the happy memories, to those joyful times. Yes. They go to the love. And that's what really matters. It really mm-hmm. is all about the love. They don't look at all of your boo-boos and mistakes. <laughs> Thank goodness, right? They love us regardless. That's all they that do. matters. The love is what it all comes down to. And, you know, I've beaten myself up too. I carried a lot of guilt yeah. with me. Mm-hmm. And I think it's natural after a pet dies to kind of question okay, did I do everything? I think that's normal and natural. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But rare is the communication from an animal that has anything to do with shortcomings. As Mm -hmm. They just are happy to be with us. And they, when they see that their time is ending, it's almost as if they're very accepting of it. Not that they want it to happen but they're far more accepting than humans are at least that's my experience yes that's such a beautiful message thank you so much for bringing that today is there is there any like do you have a like one more theme that you could share something that the animals really want us to know after they've left um do you have any common themes that you'd like to share that are popping up for you right now oh yeah I think one of the, oh yeah, I think one of the most uh, comforting uh, messages that I got over and over and over again in my work was how many times that uh, our beloved pets come through with our uh, departed human loved ones. Yeah. Nobody, nobody is over there scared and alone. Uh, Even the animals that are, you know, quote unquote homeless, we'll say shelter animals or whatever wild animals you know i have found that there is always somebody there to greet them when they yes. transition out of their body mm-hmm. there's never a sense of anyone being lost scared alone uh, without somebody mm-hmm. there to guide them or to help them i even have mm-hmm. had some animals tell me that they task themselves with being the greeters you know the official greeters when love it somebody- when somebody makes their transition because they want to, because it makes them happy because it brings them joy. And so that continues that beautiful cycle of love forward and paying it forward. And I know that there are some people that would think, well, you know, my grandma didn't like cats. Why would she want to be with my cat on the other side? (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, the, the, the common denominator is you. They're in your soul group. So everyone who you are connected to in your soul group yes. can hang out with each other if they want to on the other side. If they choose not to, they don't have to. <laughs> when, when you schedule a session and you sit down to connect with one of them, since all of them are in your soul group, it's only natural that they will come together for the session and listen in and chime in and send messages here and there. I think that's, that's so important too. And just know that the last thing, the absolute last thing that your pets want from you is for you to stay living in that pain. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. From the grief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's important that, that we grieve and that we honor our feelings because if we don't, then it becomes unresolved grief. And that's a whole other bad thing sure Uh, but they they want us to be to live our lives and to be joyful and happy because they benefit when we are in a good place that's like spiritual fuel that's like topping off their tank with wonderful spiritual energy for them so Mm -hmm. and plus who's more fun to hang out with somebody who's you know, upset and crying and, you know, beating themselves up all the time. Mm-hmm. Right. Or somebody who's smiling and happy and joyful and living their life fully. Mm-hmm. You're way more fun yes. 
when you're that person. Yes. Yeah. I like to say better human, better animals, like, you know, in, in this physical realm and, and in spirit as well, it really, it's our responsibility to really take care of ourselves so that we can care for them. Um, in so many ways, in so many ways, and, and just as you demonstrated, don't get stuck in the grief and, you know, remember the love because that's where they live. They do. And they need that from us. Even on the other side, they still need our love. They still need that to be coming from us. And when we mm -hmm. encapsulate us in, ourselves in grief, it's like shutting them off. It's cutting them off. And remember, right. they, they love us for all of our wonderful attributes. You know, they don't look at, you know, the, all of our faults, they look at us and, and love us for everything that's great about us. And being mm -hmm. in grief will literally cut off their ability to access all of the wonderful things about us. So it's really important. Now, I want to clarify, it won't harm them. Yes. Our grief will not harm them on their journey mm -hmm. um, in the spiritual realms. But again, it comes down to passing that positivity along, staying joyful and loving and living your life to the fullest. It really is, it benefits everyone, you and your departed pets, when you are able to move through your grief into yes. healing, will never be the same. Never, never. Right, right. Grief changes us, but we, we can take that and use that momentum going forward and we can apply everything we learned from that relationship onto new relationships that we form down the mm -hmm. road. Mm -hmm. That is beautiful. Karen, thank you so much for sharing the animal's perspective and what they need from us. Now um, we're going to dive into your, your free gifts in a minute, but I'd like to, I'd like for you to share with the audience, how can they find you? What is your website? And I will put this below everybody as well. Okay, super. Well, my website is really the best way to get me, karenanderson.net. Links are going to be below. Yes. And um, yes, easy peasy to find me. And awesome. uh, the free gift, so excited. So there's lots of free gifts. It's amazing. So beautiful. You know, it's, it's, I think it's when we are ready for something, I truly believe that we'll start to get little hints thrown in our path. And, you know, yes. we'll be like, oh, there it is again. And oh, ah, that keeps popping up. And oh, so if you're one of those and this keeps popping up for you, and you're, obviously you're here watching this incredible summit. So, yeah. you know, pay attention to those little indicators. That means that you're going in the right direction. So I like to encourage everyone who has the passion or the interest to learn how to communicate. And so I put together a free starter kit which includes a handbook step-by-step -step with my method, if you will, of connecting. Mm -hmm. Inside that handbook are five free digital lessons. You also get Beautiful. a quick start guide. There's also my free mobile app called Pet Loss Hope and Healing, which you can download right now. Just go to your app store, put in Pet Loss Hope and Healing, and it's free, free, free. There's tons of resources in there as well, free training in there as well. And also um, a huge discount for a limited time on my online course for beginners. It's um, a 60% discount by opting in through the starter kit. So, wow, 60% off. That's amazing, Karen. That's so generous. It's huge. It's a, a ton. So yeah. I hope I hope that spurs someone on their path and gets them excited about it. And you know, if I can do this, anyone can do this. You just it's all up here. You just have to say, you know what? I'm not gonna let anyone or anything stand in my way any longer. I don't care what anyone thinks, I don't care what anyone says. I'm doing what I want to do. This is my life. That's right. That's right. Because you used to be a sheriff. I was. <laughs> Don't judge a book by its cover, people. We all nope. have the abilities. That's right. Actually, that's where all of my psychic impressions started to come to the surface was when I was um, a deputy 
mainly because I wanted to go home safely. So I had to heighten my sense of awareness. I didn't yes. know that's what I was doing. I didn't set out to do that, but I was working by myself in a mountain district, very remotely. Oh my and gosh. the nearest backup car was sometimes a half an hour or more away. It's not like what you see on TV where, you know, 50 cars show up. Yes. To back you up. <laughs> that's not real. At least it wasn't for me. <laughs> I'd call my dispatch and they'd go, I can't hear you. The reception's bad. Where are you? <laughs> so, <laughs> totally different in real life. Um, oh God. So I'm that's so where... glad you made it, Karen, because now you're on the other side and you're helping animals communicate with their humans and vice versa and helping people really heal from their grief, from the amazing souls that they've connected with, um, four-legged, feathers, you know, scales, whatever they have, they're all amazing and part of our, our lovely family in so many ways. Thank you so much for being here today, Karen. We truly appreciate you and honor all that you do. For those of you who are watching, please click the links below. You can find Karen's website as well as the amazing free gifts she has set up just for you. Talk to you soon. Take care of yourselves, my friends. Bye.